Hi, Yarn Bees. Crochet Bee here with another edition of Tales from the Carpet Trail. So I know it's it's been a little bit since the last one. Sorry about that. Um, we're doing the best we can here in January. Thank goodness January is almost over. Uh, we're going through our annual January, February slow period where I normally drive Sandy crazy because I'm all geared up and ready to work and the phone isn't ringing and all of that so it's actually not been uh too bad so far this year the month seems to have gone by pretty quickly and i seen what i so far have not yet had a day where i've had no work at all i've had at least one job a day every day and usually two or three it's still quiet but uh at least i feel like i'm doing something so um as usual, we're trying to figure out always what we can tell you guys, but I, have, I got a pretty good one today. I think you're going to like it. So um, in our industry, uh, there's a lot of people that seem to feel that one day uh, that we're going to be like dinosaurs. We're going to be extinct. And there's always a threat of, of something that's going to put you out of business. So, I mean, obviously COVID last year was, was something that none of us could count on and uh Four of my competitors did actually go out of business, but um, Premier Carpet Cleaning, diamonds are forever, and so is Premier Carpet Cleaning. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that, of course, we're still still in business, still doing what we do. But, you know, I always have people say things to me like, well, you know, a carpet's kind of being phased out, and uh, a lot of houses these days don't have a lot of carpet. And, and that is true that... Um, wall-to-wall -wall carpet seems to be less and less but you know what ends up happening is oftentimes people will have hardwood floors and then uh, won't be very long before they realize that the floors are hard or the floor is very cold in the morning especially in the winter and so they start to buy area rugs and they put them down in everywhere so you eventually you just end up cleaning area rugs instead of carpet uh, wall to wall carpet, but you're still working. Or it's amazing how often I can make uh, pretty good money in a house that has no carpet at all because you go in and you clean, you still can clean the furniture, or you can do mattresses, or you do uh, the inside of their vehicles, or they've got a motor home, or uh, you know, uh, I may be a little short in stature, but I'm not short of work. There always seems to be um, something to do, you know, and then of course there's always the threat of, of, uh, more competitors moving into your market. And, you know, I have seen a lot of people come and go uh, in the time that I've been in business. I've seen 11 companies uh, come into the market, go out of business and leave the market. And we're still here. So I think my business model where I have uh, reasonable prices for people and it, it's flat rate and there's no tricks and uh, and it's always my, my friendly face that shows up seems to definitely... Uh, be working and people know who I am and they know that I try to do a good job. Um, and then the latest threat, of course, uh, you hear this all the time and that's what today's story about is about, you know, technology. Um, we have um, robot vacuums and one day somebody's going to invent a robot carpet cleaner that's going to be able to do my job. So there, I was on a forum with a bunch of uh, other carpet cleaners and they were talking about how uh, they're worried that uh, they're going to invent a carpet cleaning robot. So I shared this story with them to tell them how I think we're going to be okay. So the story is I got a call. This was about uh, three weeks ago from a lady. She called me in a complete panic. Um, I need you to come as soon as possible. We've had a disaster happen in the house. And I said, what happened? So what happened was um, she has a business where she installs kitchen cabinets. So she was out working, uh, doing an install. And um, she has a very large um, husky type dog at home. And, um, and she has a Roomba robot vacuum. So she was pretty excited about the fact that uh, she's programmed the Roomba so that when she's at work, the Roomba will... will come out of its little bay docking bay and and vacuum all around and she'll come home and the house will be completely vacuumed so she's all pretty excited about this and uh, she mostly just has area rugs and stuff but it's able to get 
up and over the area rug and do the rug and it does the little grid pattern or whatever. But um, something happened that she wasn't quite expecting. And that's that her lovely um, 100 and something odd pound, very large Alaska Malamute Husky type dog decided to have a great big, great big poop <laughs> right in the middle of the area rug in her living room. And guess what happened? Along comes Mr. Roomba <laughs> and he hits it and he spreads shit from one side of the house to the next. You can just imagine it going and poop is getting smeared to all four corners of her house. So she comes home to um, check up on the dog and she finds that there's poop has been spread all over everywhere. So she called me totally in a tizzy. She had already mopped all of her nice um, non-carpeted floor, her lovely vinyl and uh, wood and whatever. And she needed me to come and clean all the poop out of the area rug. So I came and, and I saw this and I just had to laugh thinking, you know, okay. And I did the job. So um, I said to the guys, I told them this story and I said, as long as the Roombas are going to be spreading poop from one end of the house to the next. I don't think we have to worry too much about a robot taking over our job anytime soon. Because obviously the robot vacuum did not recognize what it was doing. It was just thought it was doing its job. So that's my tale from the carpet trail today. I guess if I were to entitle it, I would call it Domo Erigato, Mr. Roboto. <laughs> anyway... I hope you guys liked my story. I thought that was pretty funny. So just when you think you've you've seen it all, uh, I've cleaned a lot of poop up over the years, but I've never had robot poop <laughs> spread from one end of the house to the next. So anyway, that's our story for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope everybody's uh, safe and taking care of everything. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>